Today I'm going to read from Proverbs 31, verse 10 and below. It's a, the wife of a noble character. I feel in today's world, I hear a lot of things saying, oh, if you're a Christian, then you don't have as many rights as a girl, or somehow Christian girls are, in a sense, less fe um, feminist or whatever. Um, you know, I think the problem is that people have very little understanding what the Bible actually uh, talks about a woman's world. So I wanted to read this directly from the Bible because, you know, the girl's role is not as traditional as a lot of people think um, in accordance in the Bible. And I hear that um, if you're a different religion, then you somehow get more rights as a girl than if you're a Christian. And that's not true at all. As a Christian girl and a Turkish girl, I want to read this proverb because I come from a very Middle Eastern family in a sense that I also, we also have uh, certain traditional roles for girls, but I was lucky that my father in, uh, is, in a sense, very liberal in his thinking, and he also believed, like my great-grandfather, that certain traditional roles are just ridiculous and man-placed and not God-placed. And my mom, in a sense, is a little bit like that, but she's more traditional than my dad. But overall, I really wanted to discuss what does... The Bible tells us about how a girl should be, a wife should be like. Hence, I feel like reading directly from the Bible, letting the Bible explain is better than anything else. Okay, starting verse 10. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth more than rubies. Noble character, yes. That means not sleeping around, yes. That means not lying and cheating people. Often people think, oh, okay... Well, it's the human body, then we demand sex. And in the Christian community, nobody really talks about this. Or in the Middle Eastern, it's kind of like a, a soft kind of on the side. We know it's there, but we're not going to really talk about it. I'm more outspoken about this. Um, I think the problem is that we don't value character anymore in girls and women. And see, beauty fades, but, you know, your character, your personality, that's something that stays with you. In today's society, unfortunately, that is not valued anymore. But this is in accordance to God's word. So, Next verse, 11. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Okay, this verse is very important. Her husband has full confidence in her. I see a lot of men in the, Bible, um, in the Christian um, churches and stuff who devalue their wives in a sense. And this Bible clearly says in verse 11, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Um, when I think of this verse, I think of, in a sense, how my dad has always been confident in my mom. Um, he valued her. He valued her opinions, her uh, her business decisions, her um, the way that she presented herself, he had confidence in her, he he never belittled, I never grew up in an environment, I was lucky that I never grew up in an environment where I had to watch my father belittle my mom, and um, the Bible does not teach men to belittle women, to make them feel less and not have confidence, I hear a lot of men in the Christian community say, okay, if you're a girl, then you should not have anything to do with the financial aspects, I am the man, I decide everything, <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible does say that says that. It says that the man has confidence in his wife. You know, like that doesn't mean confidence just from one sector and of taking care of the children. It means from all sectors he has confidence in her. Verse twelve. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Um, you know, this is directly towards women. I think. Sometimes women feel disconnected from their husband, and sometimes they, when they make certain decisions, you know, they don't um, always think about how it's going to affect their spouse. I mean, sometimes you get a job offer, or you want to move, or whatever, and I think we get so adamant in our own thinking that we sometimes don't you know, talk it out, say, okay, how is this going to affect your job? How is it going to affect our lives? 
So I think this is directly towards girls. I'm saying that you need to discuss things with your husband. You need to make sure that your actions don't bring harm to him. That can be shame. Um, that can be other things, you know. It's important how you act towards people and the decision you make because that does, if you're married, that does affect your spouse one way or another. Uh, verse um, 13. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. Here, when I think of this verse, I think a woman who's confident, who knows how to make her choices wisely, who knows what to pick. She doesn't ask her, her husband for every little thing. You know, I sometimes see husbands uh, and wives go into the store and she can't even choose what she wants for groceries because he he will control that. I mean, what is up with that? I mean, she, or or those husbands who make their wives sit in the car while they choose everything. I mean, I don't understand people like this. I don't know why girls marry guys like this. I personally, you know, being single is better than being in a horrible, not the type of husband God intended for you relationship. I will tell you that. I wish girls would stop getting into these awful relationships just because they are lonely or or don't want to be alone. I mean, honestly, is it really worth the torture? Moving on. Verse 14. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. This is, you know, someone, to me, um, this doesn't just talk about uh, necessary stuff like food and stuff. This is someone that, this, to me, this is a wife who is not afraid to travel, you know, who's not afraid to get in the cargo somewhere, who's not afraid to, you know, buy groceries for her family. She does not have to ask her husband for every question. This is someone who, you know, in a sense, just doesn't bring food, but brings, supplies her uh, family's needs. This is what the verse tells me. Uh, verse uh, 15, she gets up while it's still dark and provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. To me, this is definitely someone who's a planner, a girl who, you know, puts herself behind, in a sense. She puts her family first. I am not a morning person. I am someone who gets to sleep barely, gets up. Getting up in the morning is very hard for me, yet... I will do it for my family. It's that kind of thing. I will be sleeping groggy, but I will do it. <laughs> because, you know, as as a wife, I think there are certain duties. I mean, you have to consider your family's needs more than your own at times. And, you know, that's very important. So getting up, taking, you know, getting your l kids' lunch prepared or um, your behind on something for the family. I definitely think that's a really good thing. God, in a sense, smiles that you're serving your family faithfully, in a sense, and you're serving God. 16, verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. This is where all those people who thinks that a girl should not work, uh, God somehow tells girls not to work, not to make money, to, not to have her own the earning, not to have their own financial stabilizers. This verse pretty much up goes against their misguided views. She buys with her own money. She looks at Fiona. She says, okay, I'm confident woman. I know this is a right this financial decision. I will make that financial decision. I speak with my spouse, but at the same time, if it's good if it's my money, then I can also buy it. You know, this is someone who's very confident. This is someone who is very, in a sense, liberal verse right here. You know, and all those people are saying that somehow, because you're a girl in the Christian community and you don't have as much say, and that's not true at all. I mean, you don't have that much freedom. I mean, look at this person. She's doing all these amazing things that we are doing here. We're just in a different sense, but at the same time, the same way. You know, women buy house, houses all the time. Women make financial decisions. You know, this is clearly saying that a girl has the right to contribute and to make financial decisions. Next verse. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. This is someone who is very has a hardworking ethic. So this is just definitely not your lazy girl. I don't care about anybody else but me. 
This is someone who is passionate about what she does. So definitely don't think marriage is a forever girl. I mean, I wish people would stop saying that, that it, unless you're alone, you're not married, something's wrong with you. That's not true. Uh, I think that God ordained certain people to get married and certain people should not get married at all. And, you know, if you're just someone who is more self-centered, likes to only take care of yourself, you, you prefer to only contribute to your own work and not contribute to your family, you definitely should not get married. Um, you know, this is someone who takes care of herself, her strong arms, uh, for her tasks. This is someone who works out. In a sense, girls, it's good to work out, you know? You become strong. And please, this clearly says that a girl can lift her own hay bales, in a sense. I get a lot of rap for this, like, oh, you're a girl? You're lifting hay bales? Oh, come on, I don't believe you until they see me. Like, dude, I can lift more hay bales than most guys. I mean, we had this one guy one time come, this Turkish guy, and he was picking up, like, um, uh, uh, dung, in a sense, cow poop, <laughs> um, for the garden, because it's like a fertilizer. And the guy could not even lift one bucket. Here I was, a girl lifting two buckets. So this is definitely saying girls are strong. We can carry, open our own doors. It's nice if you do it, but we can. I'm just saying that we're not some fragile people who break. You know, if you give us something to live, we're not going to clearly break. So I wish guys would stop thinking that because I'm more physically fit, uh, strong than some guys out there. I can clearly tell you that right now. Um, farm girl, what can I say? Um, next question. I mean, next verse. Which is verse 18. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. So this is someone who is very career-centered, very business-centered, very, you know, smart in her, the way she handles business. This is a business girl right here, you know. And a lot of, I hear this, a lot of rap from Christian guys and other guys, you should never marry a career girl. You should never marry a career girl. First of all, my mom had two jobs and raised three children. You know, you can absolutely be a career girl and you can raise a family. So I think we need to get out of this mentality that somehow if you're a girl and you want a family, then you can't have a career, you can't be profitable, you can't be a big businesswoman. Says so in the Bible, you can. Just saying, guys, you need to read the Bible before you're thinking misguided things about girls. Next thing, and next verse, um, verse 19. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure about that verse, um, so I'm just gonna skip it to be honest. I, I'd rather just, uh, tell you that I'm not exactly sure about that verse and say I am when I'm not so better not to lie I'm sure there's other people who do understand the verse but not me I'm sorry I'm trying to think how I can communicate it communicate it to today's century but we'll just skip that for now okay verse 20 she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy this is someone who's very generous you know, who's not self-centered. Again, back to the not self-centered, you know, not selfish. She takes care of her family, but she also takes care of other people. She notice, notices other people's needs, you know. So she contributes to other people's. I think sometimes we, we come into this little bubble when we have a family or we have, you know, and we only want to help them or whatever. Do we sometimes forget that there are other people that, God wants us to help besides our family, you know, that we don't gain anything from helping them. It's just noticing their need, understanding them as a, human, a humanitarian um, person, um, not judging them. I think, get into this, everything has to be in accordance like this. If this doesn't happen, something's wrong with that person. Oh, you shouldn't marry that person because their family has a divorced person in it or whatever. First of all, I can tell you this. I've seen some amazing parents and some troubled children who grew up in amazing families. And then I've seen some troubled parents and some amazing children. So definitely don't, you know, discard someone based on their family. I, I know that family is important, but at the same time, you have to judge an individual by its, themselves, not by their family. Because in a sense, 
you have to really see does this indi- who does this individual represent in a sense who are they okay next verse when it's no she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet this is a girl who's prepared you know i'm like me charts planners winter's coming this and this we need to do this and this this is someone who takes control who's in charge who makes sure everything's all ready to go you know and another thing this is clearly a very confident self you know someone who is not afraid to take charge kind of girl again the bible is affirming what a girl should be like not what people think next verse which is 22 she makes coverings for her bed and is clothed in fine linen and purple um here when i think of this i think of like uh, she takes care of her house, household in the sense that it looks nice you know there you don't see like garbage everywhere in a sense she takes she makes sure that she's well dressed you know um so in a sense it's a good thing to i'm not saying put five pounds of makeup on every day and um look like you're coming out from the red carpet i'm just saying it's it's pleasant people look at you differently like i personally know when i I look like total crap and I bad hair day I have so much homework because I didn't haven't slept in 48 hours because I got exams and work and back to forth I'm like crazy trying to catch up with everything and sometimes the thing that I lose out on is how my hair looks and I have no makeup on running around and plain jeans and t-shirt and people like bump into me don't notice me when I've got my heels on my dress at school all of a sudden I'm getting doors open and people are noticing me so you know people just look at you more pleasantly if you're better dressed I mean it's just a good thing like when you I think um, when you go to church it's also very important I think uh, in America you're in a very um I don't know when I think of church when I think uh, if I'm going into a place of worship it's much like a temple or a mosque and I go there and I I should be appropriately dressed. You know, girls, if you're married, you should have your hair covered with certain things. Um, if you're not married, then you, obviously both married and married, you should have, you should wear dresses and skirts. I don't think wearing jeans and pants is appropriate attire to church. Like, although most people disagree on me on this, but I just feel it's the place of God to worship. I want to be dressed like a girl. I want to dress appropriately. In accordance, uh, yes, what is in my heart is more important. But at the same time, I feel like presenting yourself in that manner is important. So, next verse. Uh, Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. So, this is a man who always like, has certain views and values and honesty and He's not someone who's deceitful. He doesn't cheat people to make money. This is someone who's very respected individual. This is directly towards husband that, you know, I think men sometimes need to consider that their actions not only affect them, but their families and their wives and how people see them and how society sees them. Okay, next verse, which is 24. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Again, businesswoman, career woman. You know, this is someone basically, you know, supplying a supplier in a sense. She's supplying the merchants. She's uh, in in the manufacturing business in a sense. You know, this is someone who's running all these things, a career woman. You know, again, the career woman. God is promoting the career woman. Next verse, which is 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh, laugh at the days to come. This is someone that yeah, I do work on this because I'm, I tend to worry too much. You know, I can't always laugh at the situation that's happening because I'm too stressed out at that moment. Um, clothed in strength and dignity. You know, I think this is very important. Again, I think this has two meanings. One, how we are clothed physically in a sense if you have all your cleavage um, showing and your, I like mini skirts, trust me, I like them, but not in the sense where I'm sitting and you can literally see every, 
underneath, you know. So definitely uh, how you dress represents yourself with dignity. And, you know, if you're not afraid to talk to people, go up to people. You're not afraid to handle things. That shows your strength, you know, your confidence. Again, the Bible promotes this. The Bible in no way discourages this. I think I, I was very talkative when I was a kid. Now that I'm not now, even more. Um, it's technically, I actually yeah, am more talkative now. But when I was younger, I was kind of afraid of people my own age. Um, and I was more confident. I would go up to pastors and deacons. I would like challenge them if they did something against that was not according to God's teaching. You know, I was pretty gutsy um, when it came to older people, but younger people, uh, my age group, I was a lot shy. So, you know, some, I was someone who was very confident talking to this little kid, talking to these older people. You know, that's the kind of person I was. And this, you know, it showed my strength, I was my confidence in God's word and stuff. Uh, next verse, which is 26. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Um, and this is very simple to translate in a sense that God wants women to speak with wisdom and not foolishness, I think. You know, let me just get this out right now because I'm, uh, uh, I, I personally don't understand this whole if you're a girl then somehow people assume that you're anti-rights or what you're anti-rights. First of all, killing children, having abortions is not women's rights. It is murder. I don't, I don't even know where they come up with this stuff, honestly. Where somehow killing an innocent child, even if it's rape, if someone raped me and I was married, I would in no way kill that child. You know, Yes, this, what happened was n bad, but the child is not bad. You know, I, d I don't believe that children are evil I, in a sense that the ill-born, in a sense that, you know, evil acts happen. Sometimes evil things happen and good comes out of it because all God says all things work for the good, you know, and having, um, raising that child to serve God and to maybe be a testimony to other parents, in a sense, who are victimized or whatever, is a good thing. You know, take what happened bad to you and turn it into good. That's like the best way to fight Satan. That is like the best way. And women's rights is having the rights I've been talking about, that the Bible even gives us, that society should give us. You know, that it is not saying women's rights is not talking foolishness it's not dr dressing inappropriately that's not women's strides that is just shame that is not saying bad words and all the time foolishness the bible clearly says she speaks with wisdom this is how god wants us to, he's not saying women don't speak okay women speak with wisdom okay that's what we need to work towards girls speaking with wisdom so, next um, one. And does not eat the bread of the idleness. So, in a sense, we shouldn't... Because somebody's doing this, I think women have this tendency to follow every idiot that preaches or whatever. In a sense that if one girl is doing something, somehow you see this monopoly of other girls following. If you see a foolishness, you see a fool doing something idiotic... Don't follow. I don't care if you're there are a hundred and you're one standing. Don't follow that. God clearly says that, you know. Next verse, um, which is 28. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. You know, here I think it's clear it says this is someone who's respected in the family, is respected by her children, respected by her husband. So wives, you should work towards in a way to be respected. It doesn't mean you have any less rights as a girl. It means you have more because you work towards uh, a certain goal of being respected in your family and in the eyes of your children. So how you act and what you do is important because that shows society and how society sometimes views you can be how your children view it in a sense. But overall, I think your actions are what this verse is specifically looking towards. Verse 29, 
Many women do noble things, but you surprise them all. The husband praises her in that. That is clearly says that, you know, this is someone who goes beyond and above for her family, for this community. There's someone who's very busy, you know? And, again, this also goes to back to men. I think that often husbands don't appreciate all their wi- what their wives do. And this is quite often seen in all different kinds of cultures, not just um, Middle Eastern, but all in Russian and all different kinds of cultures. So definitely it says that, you know, you should notice what your wife does. You should praise her. You should thank her. You know, she might not, you know, she might take it like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, no problem. Sure. You know, I don't mind. And it's like, oh, I don't expect you to thank me. But it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear that we're appreciated, that you notice the things we do. So definitely, I think that men, you should pay more attention to girl, your wives. This clearly says so. <laughs> okay, next verse, which is 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I think this verse says quite a bit. I mean, we... Um, spend so much time on our looks as girls and and now we then we shouldn't spend some time on it and we spend we get so much importance to charm and beauty that we don't always understand that there's something more important which is how we fear the lord i mean it um as someone who worked towards an acting career, I can honestly say that, you know, when I wanted to be an actor all my life, I wanted to do that for a few years and then jump into the business world and stuff. Um, I was someone who wanted to do various things. Um, I liked action fields. I loved doing stunts. I, I, I was a, uh, was training to be a gymnast, so uh, I loved doing that um, before I took out my back. But, um, you know, this is clearly saying who fears the Lord in a sense, how I present myself, how my actions, you know, I I told myself that, you know, I'm going into this field where women basically do all these sex scenes and they are always in bikinis and it's fine for some people, but I fear the Lord. I, I, I feel like I might be traditional in this, but I don't feel like I should show my body to everybody. My husband should be the one who sees it. I think the bikinis have been... It's so tiny now. Now it's not even bikinis. It's just strings. I mean, I mean honestly, you can wear a, swim, a big swimsuit, cover most of it, and be presentable. Um, and I'm just saying, in a more, you have to understand how you present yourself as a Christian, as a woman does, is more important than beauty. And unfortunately, um, not that we don't like being pretty, we do. It's just society gives so much. Um, focus on that. I, I know I do in a sense too, and when I, I will not marry anyone who is not good looking in a certain age group. So obviously looks are important to me, but they're not everything. I can honestly say I've broken up with so many good looking guys that were like model types, but because I didn't like their personalities or I didn't want to date them in the first place because I felt they didn't fear the Lord. They were very worldly. And I want someone who fears the Lord. I want someone who has very control of his himself, his actions, his emotions his physical needs i need that kind of person who puts god's fears you know beyond his own needs and that's saying the same thing for girls you need to you know what some pressures you to have sex you have to understand god is clearly the same it's adultery unless you're married i mean god is not saying sex is bad god is just saying sex is bad outside of marriage you know and in, in this world we promote all these things that are not you know, God advantage to God the correctly. Um, in this world, we have sometimes we put so much more importance to, and men do this, and I think women do this too. But men are also very guilty of doing this in the sense that um, they present so much focus on beauty, and girls as well that they don't put that same effort towards. Um, the fear of the Lord, and what God teaches them to be like. So next verse. Um, Give her the wor- reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Um, so definitely the saying that women should be recognized. Women 
for their hard work, for their dedication. And in the city gate, I see it as in the community. Women should be recognized in the community for um, their contribution and whatever it is, a, a noble cause or whatever. So this is definitely saying that we should not, when we think girls, we should not say, oh, okay, that suddenly, if she's a girl, I should not give that a much importance to what she has accomplished versus a boy that's not sure this is clearly saying that you know girls should be presented to society as doing all these amazing things and they're not so one-sided minded and so as you can see as we read through these verses that the bible clearly does promote career woman hard-working planner family she runs it all you know i'm not saying things will go perfectly you won't Sometimes you'll spend more at work. Sometimes you'll spend more at home. I'm not saying that it'll be a perfect balance. Obviously, things go wrong all the time. But at the same time, we are not, in a sense, promoted in the Bible to be stay-at-home moms only. I'm not saying that's a negative thing at all. I'm not saying that at all. And, I, and if you want to do that, that's great. But at the same time... You should not be forced into it. You know, you know, if you want to have a career, you want to chase some large dreams like I want to be a CEO, then you should definitely do so with the support of your husband or with the support of your family. And give equal importance. I mean, give importance to all of them. And the Bible shows that this person gives importance to her family, to her husband, to her career. She, she's not one-sided, you know. And so as you begin to clearly see, the Bible does, in a sense, promote feminism. It does promote the queer woman along with the family woman. So this thinking mentality people have that women should not speak, women should not have this right or that right, it's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches whatsoever. And when it says, you know, girls should be submits of their, their husbands, I clearly believe that it's not in the sense that the husband takes control and decides everything. It's... It's where you make the decision. It's 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 talking directly to the woman who wants to do everything on her own and doesn't want her husband to decide anything. You know, I think that's in a compromising more of a situation. You know, you should consider what he says and what he says is important. That kind of thing. I mean, if you marry a dictator, good luck. I wish you luck because you're gonna either two things are gonna happen. You're gonna be miserable all your life. Because you're controlled by someone, you don't have your own brain, as my God, as my um, dad says, a girl should have her own brain, and she should not follow society or even her parents if they are going against God's will for her life. Because sometimes parents mean well, but they don't know God's will for her life. So she definitely should have follow her heart and brain in accordance to God's will, in in the path that He's leading her to. So my dad always promoted that. Like he always felt like I should not let other girls or other people manipulate me. A lot of people say, "Okay, um, why don't I paint my hair? Why is my hair natural? Why don't I do this and that? Why don't I have thick eyebrows? I like my thick eyebrows. I like my hair. Thank God I'm not blonde. You know, nothing against blondes. It just works for my face. You know, it's like uh, I think these." People get so involved in trying to change you. Something as if something wrong with you. First of all, you need to like yourself as you are. I, if you want to improve on certain things like losing weight, work hard at it. You will lose it. It will come off. It will come on again. It will come off. That's how life is. But at the same time, you should like yourself. You should not let people change everything about you. How you dress. How you talk. You know, you should actually change in accordance to how God wants you to be, okay? So this is for girls and guys. So you should not try to change your wives if it's to your will and not to God's. So I wish you all well. I hope you liked my video. Keep watching. I'll have more posted. Thank you.